<laughs> Alright, so that's rolling, that's rolling. It's Jenny from Origami Tree, and today I am with the co-authors of this awesome new book that's coming out on November 7th. It's called Creative Origami and Beyond, and it's a project that I've been working on um, this past year with Paul Fresco right here that I have here, and also Stacy Tamaki. Stacy, you can say hi. Hi. There, that, that's her. <laughs> and then, um, and also Coco Sato. Let's just go around like the table and introduce ourselves. So, I'll just, I guess I can start. Uh, my name is Jenny, as you guys know. I am the founder of Origami Tree and I post craft tutorials all year round, so make sure you subscribe. And um, I really like to design simple models for children and I also like to work with senior citizens too. I think it's really fun. And, um, what else do I like to do? I like to listen to music a lot and binge watch TV shows on Netflix. And this is Paul Frasco. Hi everybody, I'm Paul Frasco. Uh, you can follow my work at wetfold.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I'm best known for fantasy creatures. So in the book you'll learn how to make this gnome that's been traveling around the world with me. So the gnome follow, is so cute! If you follow me on Instagram, he's been to Peru, uh, he's been to New York City Comic Con, and, and should continue his trip around the world uh, throughout. So, don't know, no, I, I, don't, I don't think we're violating the logos rule. No, he just no, looks wait. like the so, Travelocity now. So, so this gnome, actually, you have an Instagram account. I where do. You, you like take pictures of the gnome, right? On Origami by Frasco, you can follow the gnome's tour around the world. Okay, I'm gonna cool. I'm going to get to every continent with him. That's amazing. And I'm going to have the links to everybody's uh, Coco's site, Stacy's site, uh, mine and Paul's. Uh, all, everybody's sites are going to be in the video description, so be sure to check them out. They do some amazing, amazing work. And I really like this gnome. And you said this tutorial is actually going to be in the book, so it is. Um, you can pre-order it, you can buy it at bookstores, hopefully. Are they going to bookstores? I think they'll be in your local bookseller, uh, if you can find a local bookseller anymore, but certainly they'll be on Amazon.com, Barnes Maybe and Noble. Barnes and Nobles. And I, I know for a fact it'll be on Barnes and Noble. Yay! It's so exciting. Um, and then later on in this stream, uh, Paul is going to be teaching us how to fold the cute little owl. Oh, another project from the book that you can learn. So this this owl in a tree. Yeah, you can bring it closer too. Should be uh, should be fun, and, and you know I like to do. I think that the work I'm best known for looks much more difficult than it is. So I think when we fold the owl, you'll see it's it's easy. Anybody can do it, uh, even if it even if it looks hard. Some of the stuff behind me looks a lot more complicated than it than it oh, really I is. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna take this home. I'm gonna put it in my backpack. And ah. <laughs> Take it home. It is. This is so gorgeous. I I love it. The intricate details of the head, especially. It's beautiful. Yeah. Is it unicorn? Uh, it's a it's a Pegasus. He doesn't have a Pegasus. horn, but you know what? I mean, I guess we can always add. We can always add one. There's always. There's no. There's no wrong answers. And uh, that's. He's he's in a project that I'm working on that'll be out in February. So in February back. we'll. Put it back. We'll be able to. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wow, thank you so much for sharing that. That's, sure. He is incredible, this guy. Oh, I, here. I do what I can. Um, I, I've actually never done wet folding before. I don't know why, I just haven't uh, explored in that area, so I really appreciate the work that you do. Um, and let me just show you this section of the book. Yeah, it's, you're, you're right here, right? Yeah, I'm towards, I'm the back. I don't know how that happened. But because they the, saved the best the, for last, oh, right? But look at that. Pretty. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, so I you. think I, I think my I think my section has a number of tips and tricks about. I mean, I paint all my own paper, so it's got tips on how to paint paper, and then you know part of my process is is working with the paper so that you get really soft organic shapes and, and a much more sort of sculptural sort of look and feel to the finished product. So a lot of people are surprised by yeah. how heavy the pieces that I make are. You know, they don't. They don't feel like they feel much more like paper mache or or something else than they do like uh, yeah. like, like you might expect. Yeah, this honestly like I don't. This doesn't even look like paper to me. It looks I don't know. 
It's, it's it amazing. looks so solid. It's right? really solid. It's completely it's solid. Quite hot. Yeah. Should I toss it across the room? I, you know, it's it's funny. <laughs> a lot of people pick them up and they're very gentle and careful with them. And and I I do occasionally throw them on the ground uh, in front of people just to make them comfortable that you can pick them up and and you know the only thing they don't like is water. You, yeah. You, if you if you drop them in water, they get very upset. If you uh, put them if you put them in, in a window while it's raining. <laughs> They get very upset. Moisture is, is kind of the natural enemy. Yeah, I mean, if you drop me in water, I'll be pretty upset too. <laughs> I, sh I shower almost every day, need it or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, now I want to introduce um, Coco Sato. So she talked a little bit about her robo origami before. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you like to do and maybe show us um, you know, just show us one of your favorite models and why you, what it means to you and why you like it. Okay, so um, my name is Coco. Uh, I live in the UK. I'm originally from Japan. And uh, I like to introduce Japanese culture to the world. So that's why I picked origami to be my main source of expression of my art. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I'm really just in technology and how the technology can uh, make uh, art interesting in many different ways. So uh, one of my mission is to use simple technology so that it's accessible to kids and maybe women, uh, young girls who may be put up by technology because it sounds a little bit like geeky or it may be complicated, but I'm trying to make it really easy and uh, fun for the process and the, the finished product is actually wearable or carry it around with you so you can show it off to your friends and family and also as a fine artist I do many different installation art um, general origami for festivals and events and I'm currently collaborating with other technologists, designers, engineers to make my installation to be more interactive That's amazing. Um, I just I didn't really enjoy uh, working with somebody from different background Mm -hmm. And the giant installations that you plan to do, are they going to light up and move or um, be controlled okay, by? So, <laughs> installation I do is a really like a fine art approach. So like, you know, when I have a bigger funding from uh, events, festivals, organizations, I can make uh, the technology part more, uh, more amazing. But for now, I've got simpler installation with like a, Arduinos and maybe handmade component. Mm -hmm. So it, it looks quite advanced, but actually it's really, really hands-on. Like I use chopsticks as part of um, installation, that it's part of the um, me mechanics. It's actually made from like really cheap accessible materials. Yeah. Well, um, I'm gonna bring this up again <laughs> and showcase Stacy's, uh, sorry, sorry, Coco's section. Where is that? Oh, right here. I mean, I love this, like this lamp right here. Here's her section. It's really that's quite right. beautiful. That's, that's my section. <laughs> and which one, uh, which one is your favorite here? Um, my favorite must be this tiara because mm -hmm. it, it's the mixture of LED light and it's paperwork and it's wearable. So that's like combining my three passion in one. Here it is. That's it. There, that is. I, I, I love this. Um, I did. I think I did like one or two projects with circuits once, and it was really fun. And I, I use copper tape, but I noticed that you use copper thread, which is pretty neat too. Yeah. Um. So um, I worked with a technologist, and uh, he's like my genius friend, Doctor Nick. And uh, we, we experimented with different conductive materials, like wires, copper tapes and all sorts of things. Uh, we noticed the copper, uh, not copper, sorry, this conductive thread is the most... Yeah, did I say source. copper thread? I meant conductive thread. <laughs> so yeah, co copper tape is really, really beautiful. It's like shiny and it's sexy, but just it did not work the way I, we wanted it to work because it's quite temperamental and it needed to be uh, soldered together with... Uh, I needed to use different tools to make it happen. So in this book, um, me and my technologist wanted things to be really simple and definitely it works so we chose to use the, the um, conductive thread which is available from you know Amazon or any technology website it's, it's easily accessible and you can buy them online and hopefully you can have a go at it 
Oh, wonderful. Is there um, anything else that you like to do other than origami? Um, <laughs> you know, but as an artist, right, like, um, it is really easy thing to market right now, mm -hmm. and I, I have been doing it, but I'm really interested in, like, psychology. Oh, cool. Um, so, so I want to use my different passion in my art, but through maybe using origami aesthetics. And also, I like textiles, so I make bags. But again, it looks a little bit like origami, a lot of treating, a lot of folding involved, and I use like a cloth, uh, for example, a scarf to wrap presents. So it, it, it is kind of like wrapping and folding, but I use by using different materials. Wonderful. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And um, you. Stacey, you're still there, right? <laughs> Sorry we made you wait for so long. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you enjoy doing, uh, what type of work you've been working on? Sure. Um, so I'm Stacy Tamaki and I now reside in the Midwest. I moved out to Michigan from the West Coast uh, in 2014. Oh, and where were you before? Well, with the the transition of coming out here kind of started with just kind of being over living in California for mm -hmm. 27 years. I lived in eastern Washington state before that, so it wasn't that big of a leap to go from Silicon Valley to West Michigan. Because <laughs> people here are like, oh, the winters. It's like, well, I grew up with snow when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But I came out, I learned of a, an open art competition called Art Prize that's held once a year in Grand Rapids. And they turned three square miles of downtown Grand Rapids into public art spaces. Wow. And I had done my miniature origami, is what i become known for and what I enjoy doing most, for about 17 years is what I now call my hidden hobby. Wow. <laughs> and with our prize and taking and putting it out in public, it was the first time for me to really do that. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm pursuing my art as my full-time career because the cost of living here is so much more reasonable than <laughs> in California. Oh, I so wish I we... So I'm allowed to do that here. New Yorkers don't have that. <laughs> yeah, we're New Yorkers and we're like, hmm. <laughs> I think we need a full-time job. I'm actually having a little work studio built where I can just do my origami and have all my supplies in one place. And yeah, I yeah. learned through someone I know back in California because they're having a similar small space built that but here I had to pay $30 for a zoning permit mm -hmm. to build a 12 by 16 foot studio. And in Santa Clara where I lived before, the minimum building permit is $21,000. Oh my god! So I definitely made the right choice by moving. And I don't need a big space to work in because everything I make is very small. Mm -hmm. So this is true. Um, the piece that I featured oh. in the book. Oh yeah, it's yeah. A little let's, let's find box. That with a little tiny water lily on top. This is the big one. In the book, I also have one this size. Mm. Um, oh, so, like so that little one size. is this one right here? Yeah, that's that, that one. Oh. And then on the page that shows the small and the large. And when they approached me about doing the book, I wanted to combine it so that everything could go together. So if you open the little box, then I have like little cranes inside of them. Oh, so that's people so cute. can either just learn to make a box, or make a crane and put it in the box, or make the lily and put it on top of the box, and turn the whole thing into just a really unique little gift item. That um, so like there's a little crane in that one too. That's really really cute. Um, I like that. But I like Coco. It resonated when when she was talking that I have found my tagline for my business has kind of become art within reach. Mm -hmm. And to me, it means a couple things. It's like, I love that as an art form, it's something almost anyone can do. It's like, you don't have to apparently even have vision. I had a man tell me he has a friend who folded a thousand cranes and he's blind. Um, wow. And then a man folded me a tiny little origami just a couple months ago. And when he handed it to me, I realized he was missing part of his fingers. But he still did this intricate little one and a half inch square paper fold down into a little cootie catcher, he called it. Oh. Um, so just the fact that all you need is any piece of paper and instructions, I, I love that. Mm -hmm. Because I paint, but painting, you know, between the expense of your materials, your brushes, your paints, your canvas, it, it can put that out of reach for some people. Mm -hmm. So I love doing more simple folds. I love looking at intricate fold work. 
but I've just never personally had the desire to pursue it. Exactly. Like, I see those things and think, oh, I want to buy one so I can put it in my studio. She wants to buy one. <laughs> I to make it. It's like, I, I probably could with enough practice and the instructions like that are in the um Just flip, to the, flip to the back of the book. And <laughs> but I'm like, I, I want to leave that to the people who enjoy doing that work. And I just keep going smaller and smaller. And I do these mobiles, like what's next to me here. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, can you tell us I a little bit about that? Sets, or a thousand cranes in each set. Uh -huh. And this year, for the first time, I did one set that was um, frogs, a thousand tiny frogs that were three quarter inch. Frogs. And a thousand tiny rabbits, the little moon rabbit foal. That's and so, so cute. each mobile represents a different aspect of Japanese culture or customs mm -hmm. and traditions or stories. And it's, it's a way that I can share that with with the viewers at Art Price every year. I do three to four sets each year for the past three years. Mm -hmm. So it's like three to four thousand tiny gummies, I call them. Oh my gosh. For each, set, um, each year, each collection. I, I don't that. think I pulled 3,000 items ever. Ever? In, in the history. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Yeah, well, on the foldings, you know, the fun part is like cutting all the paper down into the thousand tiny squares. Wait, you like so cutting? And then hanging them is really tedious. <laughs> So uh, there's there's a lot of challenge to it that, that people don't see, but I love it for some reason. Yeah, um, I, I love it. For years that. I told people I felt like I had some bizarre form of creative obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> but then someone saw my work and said, I think this is what they call working meditation. I heard of it, but I'd never seen it mm -hmm. until I just saw your, your mobiles. Yeah, and actually. So more elegant. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're actually a part, there's a, section in this book that I worked on is called Meditative Origami. I think it's, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I haven't really looked through this yet, so I'm like flipping through the pages, like where is this part? Um, yeah, the, it's called Mindful Origami, and then I wrote like a little article about creating stars, I and I yeah. feel like that's like the same thing, like you do certain motions over and over, and all of a sudden like you clear your mind, and you're just, in the zone doing your thing, so I, I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it's and yeah, yeah um, definitely. For me to hold them. How about um, for you? Smooth, it, smooth. That's the, the feeling I want to evoke when people see the pieces, but some people get stressed out just looking at them, imagining how much work it took <laughs> to make them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think I find myself folding the same thing over and over, and my favorite thing to fold is always the thing I'm working on right now, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I find that, that I do, and for me, you know, s some of the other people who work in intermediate and complex origami, they design everything before they even pick up a sheet of paper, and that's not oh, my Oh yeah, process. yeah, I don't so, you know, know how they do that. I'm, I'm very much, uh, I like the exploration, and I think, so when, when you pick up my diagrams, I think that they're, I mean, I have to have fun doing it, so I think other people will have fun doing it. So every everything I do has a you know I have kind of a firm thirty minute cap. You know I don't like I don't like anything that takes longer than thirty minutes anymore. <laughs> that, that's a so so a, a firm thirty minute cap, and and then there has to be a moment where you say aha, you know mm -hmm. now I've got a you know suddenly it's you know it went from being something to. Now it's an owl. Like I like that moment where you know oh, I like yeah, balloons yeah, where you yeah. blow it up. I like uh, I like things where you you make that one little fold and all of a sudden it becomes totally different. Yeah, yeah. Th those are the best types of folds when you just do one thing and it's like boom <laughs> changes. How about you, Coco? Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, you know, origami. It's amazing, it's amazing about origami is like you start with a sheet of paper and then you spend some amount of time and effort in it, and then suddenly you have the object. And it is amazing that we only need hand, <laughs> finger, yeah. and sheet of paper to make something, which is quite a bit of art form, right? Mm -hmm. And LEDs and copper wire. Oh yeah, wire. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tiny battery like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Paul had wanted to show us how to make one of those cute little owls that he showcased. Are you sure? Sure. Doing that? I think we can. I think. We I think we have to like get a little closer to the camera, though. So we're gonna make an owl from the book. So for those who have the book, you know, we're very much uh, looking at uh, a bit of a different 
setup than we have for, for the book. In the book that'll be teach you how to make a hand painted paper that'll give it a great feather pattern. But here we'll just make it out of a, a standard piece of paper. And we're gonna start with a water bomb base if people are familiar with that. So I'm gonna fold in half on the diagonal. And then I'm gonna open my paper back up and fold in half again on the diagonal. And so this owl is, is again based on a, a water bomb base. Uh, so if you, you, that's something you can use for all kinds of things if you're looking to design your own models or, or not. So if you're familiar with a balloon, make that start with a water bomb base or number of rabbits and other items. All right, so now we've made our pre-creases and I'm gonna pop it to create a, a water bomb base. And I'm gonna fold this tip here. All the way down, folding my model in half and unfold. And I'm gonna fold the tip to that new line. And then I'm gonna fold up. And this is what we call a, 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 rat, a rat fold, right about there. You're gonna wanna fold that up to create what's gonna be the beak. And now you'll notice I've got these two flaps on each side. I'm gonna fold just the top flap over so that it's parallel to the center line and do that on both sides. And this is gonna form the, the wings of our owl. So what you can see here is we've got almost all of the basic shape of our owl. He's got a beak, he's got a head, he's got two wings, and then these extra flaps here. So we're gonna turn over and I'm gonna fold those down to the center line at a bit of an angle. And these are gonna form little, uh, little feet. When I turn this back over, you can see, you know, we've got an owl. So this is how some people might stop. And if you wanted to stop right here, you could, but I'm gonna make it, make it a, a wet fold owl now, right? I'm gonna add a couple little details, folding over to make little points for the feet. And these are the two steps that I think make it make it really fun. So I'm gonna have to hide it a little bit while this magic happens. This is my favorite. I'm gonna crimp like this, and all of a sudden it went from a sort of flat paper owl to a more three-dimensional horned owl. And then we're gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna make a little crimp here, and a little crimp here, and you can sort of see the difference, right? All of a sudden he became very three-dimensional, and, and has these beautiful wings. So you do that on the other side. And you can do it, I mean, I'm doing it just to my personal taste. You can practice a little bit and then just fold the beak out a little bit. And all of a sudden you've got a very three-dimensional owl instead of a, a flat owl. And you can put him in the tree, which we also teach people how to make in the book and, and have him sit on your shelf. Again, if you want to make this cute little owl designed by Paul over here, make sure you grab a copy of the book. It's, or you can just watch this video, I guess now, right? But if you want to make the tree that goes along with the owl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you want to, you know, the, that is a custom cheap. custom display stand and uh, you know we also mm -hmm. you know again a lot of what I do is about sort of the starting with pieces of paper I, I almost work almost exclusively with white paper or black paper and and then I, I hand paint everything all myself so there's a, a lot in there about some two, two sort of simple patterns that I like to use to create tree bark and mm -hmm. and feather patterns and uh, and how to pick colors and uh, you know, my book that's coming out in February will have more about how to paint. Oh yeah, textures. you have another book coming out, I right? I do. Oh so, my gosh! And what is that one called? It'll be called Fantastical Creatures, and it'll be all fantasy creatures like this. Ah, I'm little taking gnome, that home too. <laughs> or is that cute? This little dragon hatchling. So he's a, a little dragon coming out of eggs. So these are all one sheet of paper, and we. You know, use use both sides of the paper to create color changes. We have fantastic a little vampire, it's a spooky vampire, right? Just a, a little late for Halloween, but yeah, 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 yeah. So it should be, it should no, be or a fun. little early for Halloween. A little early for, for next, next Halloween. Halloween, yeah. Um, and I think Coco has like 
she has, you have a video tutorial too on your site, right? Can you tell oh, us what yeah, you yeah, have on so, your site? Um, what I created for the book is way perfect for parties, like Christmas maybe is coming up, so you can make this and follow my tutorial and then in the book you will see how you can make the socket to work, make this uh, nice work with a little tiny battery. And also in the book I've got um, how to make a little purse like this, so again it comes with very really tight and it's perfect for going to parties. And inside, <laughs> I can show you, it's like, like that. I love there that. You can carry little pieces, coins, lip balms, credit cards, and take it to the party scenes. However, for time being, it's Christmas coming, so I thought to show you how to make a minimalistic paper tree. Oh, cute. Okay, so this is made with a paper, which is A3, cut into square, as so it's minimal. Or if you go for the large, which is A1, size, cut into square. And if you go to my website, uh, www.coposato.co.uk, uh, there's a link to the video tutorial, so go and have fun. Oh, great, great, great. And I'll also post that link in the video description, so you make sure you read that video description. It's going to have um, all the information for everybody's uh, special projects, his new book coming out. So there's a lot of exciting things that are going on. And um, yeah, Stacy, do you have anything else you want to add or something you want to show us? Um, no, no, <laughs> not really. I've just been working really hard on helping with the studio. Not so much the building of it itself, but you know, being like the errand person and mm -hmm. <laughs> going to get supplies and grading around the build site with a shovel and get, you know, removing the drainage and stuff like that. We're just trying to get the exterior done before winter. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the that's important. Winter, so. <laughs> yeah. so unfortunately, I haven't been spending quite as much time folding the last few weeks now. Um, I have been spending more time on, on doing hard manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get back to it. I'm pretty sure you will. And yeah. what are you holding? I was going to say for our international audience, uh, I have this book that just came out. It's a great kit of uh, dragons that really fly, dragon paper airplanes. Uh, you can get that on Amazon.it or Amazon.bar. So that this happens to be the French edition. This is so cool. And for those who are sad that it's in French or, or Italian, the, the U.S. version should be out pretty soon, but it's a beautiful kit that comes with a number of uh, custom papers that were designed by my good friend Sam Ida, and uh, they're, a lot, they're, a lot, they're a lot of fun. I, I think that uh, people will be surprised at how much, uh, how well they fly, and how much you know, there really are dragons that fly, uh, rather than uh, you know, paper airplanes that have printed dragon paper on. So they're, you know, oh, got, these are actual dragons. Yeah, they've got, they've got okay. mouths and claws and, you know, all, all kinds of fun stuff and there's a fireball and stuff. so it's Perfect. it's a lot of fun for Perfect. for the international audience if they're feeling left out by mm -hmm. by us directing just so at amazon.it or which is the italian amazon or amazon that i put oh cool so. cool cool so um yeah i'm gonna have a link to that too but anyway i think we're gonna wrap up pretty soon and let's just grab that book one more time <laughs> i can't really reach it he has longer arms than i do so again, these we are all here today, like, um, and we work together to create creative origami and beyond. And I think there's a little tagline too. So inspiring tips, techniques, and projects for transforming paper into folded works of art. So I love that little tagline. Um, be sure to check this book out. I'm gonna have a link to purchase the book in the video description and I'll probably have it show up on this video screen too so it makes it easier to find. We all worked really really hard on it and we're really proud of our work. As you can see everybody is super passionate about what they do like it's just so obvious um, and that's what I really like about um, the people who worked on the book. There's really something for everyone. So, there's traditional stuff, there's oh new yeah. age stuff, there's technology stuff, there's wet folding. There's, there's something, there's literally something for everyone. Yeah, there. yeah. And I have some of, um, some original designs here that I will not be teaching on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Exclusive you gotta get the any. book. <laughs> you gotta get the book. And um, be on the lookout for another video coming out soon-ish. 
I'm probably going to be giving away a copy of this book, so be sure to subscribe to my channel, um, Origami Tree. The link will be somewhere here. And thank you everybody for sh um, spending your time and thank you for coming out. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Coco. Thank you for welcoming me to your fake living room. Uh, my real living room. <laughs> this is not a set. It's my living room. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. It, it, it's a set. You know, it's a it's a film set that we're. Um, the fact that in. none of these books have any titles does give <laughs> give away the illusion. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh, thank you everyone for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.